Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make a self-destruct button. So let me go ahead and sneak up on one of these NPCs and I can show you how it works. All right, so I'm right behind the NPC now. I'm going to trigger my self-destruct. And there we go. So I took out myself and the NPC. All right, let's go ahead and dive in and see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so we're going to get started by constructing our button that we're going to use for our self-destruct. To do that, we're going to start by clicking on the UI button. After that, we're going to be inserting a screen GUI. And then inside that screen GUI, we're going to be inserting a button. You can choose either an image button or a regular button. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and choose an image button. You can drag it to wherever you want to on the screen. You can resize it and customize it to look however you want to. If you want to use an image on the image button, you can take an image from the toolbox. So if you use the drop down and select images, you can search for whatever you want to. Once you find an image that you like, you can right click on it and then select the last option. And then for your image button, you're going to locate the image section. So right here, you're going to delete the text that was already there. And then you can right click and paste. Once you press enter, it should load the image from the toolbox. Like I said before, you can customize this to look however you want to. Or if you just want to use a simple text button, that's fine too. Before we start with the scripting, we're going to be adding a remote event inside of replicated storage. So you can go ahead and click on the plus sign and then add a remote event. And then you're going to rename that remote event to bomb event. Okay, so now that we have that remote event inside of replicated storage, we can start with the scripting. So we're going to locate our image button, click on the plus sign and add a local script. The only thing we're going to be doing for the local script is triggering the remote event. And then we're going to be writing another script inside a server script service. And that's where we're going to be handling the explosion. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So on this local script, all we're going to say is script dot parent dot mouse button one click. So this is a click on the image button. We're going to say colon connect. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put function. Inside this function, we're going to say game dot replicated storage dot bomb event. So that's the name of our remote event. And then we're going to trigger this by saying colon and fire server. Okay, so that's all we need for the local script. So the next thing we're going to do is insert a script into the server script service. On this script, we're going to be waiting for the remote event to get triggered. So we're going to say game dot replicated storage. We're going to say colon wait for child. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put the name of our remote event. So that's bomb event. On the outside, we're going to say dot on server event. We're going to say colon connect. Inside the parentheses, we're going to put function. Inside the parentheses next to function, we're going to get the player that triggered the remote event. We're going to do one check before we explode the player. So we're going to check to make sure that the player's health is greater than zero. And this just prevents certain things like the player dying and then exploding afterwards. So we're going to say if, and then our player is stored in our variable PLR. We're going to say dot character, and then dot humanoid. And then the property that we're checking is the health. And we want to make sure that's greater than zero. If it's greater than zero, then what we're going to do is create an explosion. So we'll say local explosion. And that's going to be equal to instance dot new. Inside here, we're going to be creating an explosion. We're going to put this explosion in the workspace. So we're going to say explosion dot parent. And that's going to be equal to game dot workspace. And finally, we're going to set the position. So we'll say explosion dot position is going to be equal to player dot character dot humanoid root part and then dot position. All right, and that's all we need for the script. And I notice we have an extra character up here. So let me just delete that real quick. If you want to, you can also adjust the blast radius, which is how far the explosion is going to reach. To do that, you can just say explosion dot blast radius. And you can set that to whatever number you want to. So if we do something like 10, then it's going to affect parts in a 10 stud radius of the player. All right, so let's go ahead and run it and make sure everything works. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get in this group of NPCs, and then we will self-destruct. 
All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.